This is MMA Fight Corner, live on Fox Sports Radio with your hosts, Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and Joey Varner. Hey, this is Mike Goldberg, voice of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Here we go! Here we go! Uh, here we go indeed. Welcome into the MMA Fight Corner. Uh, I am Phil Devine. I will be your uh, captain today on this ship of gold, <laughs> along with uh, Joey Varner, Heidi Fang. Uh, Billy Mirror will be joining us today. And also today we have uh, not only uh, UFC lightweight Ryan Couture joining us, but we have Tough 17 castmate. Uh, and I do say castmate because he's joining us on this ship. Yes, he is. cast member. Uh, Adam Salad joining us in studio today and uh, really looking forward to talk to him a little bit about this past season and uh, what we should expect uh, in the next couple of weeks on the show. So that should be fun. And uh, Billy Mira is also be uh, coming back to the show, joining us. And uh, when, I, when I think of Billy, the first thing I want to say is I want to throw a special shout out to Dr. Richard Rothman of LASIK in Nevada. <laughs> because on Monday, we weren't sure if he found the studio, but now we know with that beautiful vision, he can find the studio. Billy so, is no longer blind as a bat, you, thanks to you, Dr. Richard Rothman. Yeah, definitely. So, But we got a great show lined up for you, a lot of fast-paced, action-packed, so we might as well just get right to it. Um, last night was the Ultimate Fighter. Last night, Ultimate what did, Fighter. What did you think of the show, real quick? Ooh, well, Adam, hey, you were there firsthand, brother. How awesome was that? That was. Did those two fights that we got to see last night take place on the same day? Uh, no, those fights were actually... They kind of switched it around a little bit. Those fights were, I think, uh, one was maybe on a Tuesday and the other was on a Thursday. Um, but they made them to where they're on the same the same night, which uh, which was interesting because it was, it, they were both two kind of really cool fights. Um, but no, the the fight that stood out to me was Dylan and uh, and Luke. Dude, that's the fight of the season so far. I, I has to be. I mean, I haven't seen. You know more. You're on the inside, but sitting on the outside looking in to date, that that is the fight of the season. Well, I, I said, you know, that was probably the best fight since Forrest and Stefan, and I said that being there, and you can actually hear every punch hit, and you hear every kick land, and 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 you can actually see their facial expressions. Um, you know, but I actually watched it back last night, and it was just as good as as I remembered. So. Uh, yeah, I think I think each of them just won twenty five grand. Yeah. Well, I have to be honest. Um, you know, over the last few years, the Ultimate Fighter. You know, you kind of got into this repetitious thing, seeing it over and over the same thing. This season, and we've talked about it before, is by far the greatest season the Ultimate Fighter ha has put on. And you know, every single fight has been amazing. All of you have been amazing, not only in the sh like in the show, but I mean on the fights. And now you're actually. One of you're part of history now. You're one of the only people. You're the only. There's well, two. Well, yeah, there's two. There's two. You and Tor. Another one. Tor are actually fighting in an event before the Ultimate Fighter finale. That's yeah. never happened before. Yeah, I can't remember uh, anybody ever going. You know, fighting before the finale because usually they don't announce the fights until kind of the show's over. Um, but they actually, I guess, they just waited till the uh, the wild card was picked and everything like that. So. Uh, but no, a couple good things, couple bad things. Good thing is I get a free trip to Sweden. Yeah, yeah, yeah but no, but that's very good. <laughs> you see, I speak, I speak Swedish. You I know that. You should come you. with me. You uh, should come I'll be your translator. Like, oh, oh, hello there. <laughs> <laughs> so if I could fight the tour. Oh, go ahead. Yep. Oh, I was gonna say a couple bad things though. You know, I am going to the tour's backyard. Um, so that's gonna be kind of interesting. But I mean, I've been the underdog before. It's not really a big deal. So you got a you got a tough task ahead. Not just in his backyard. You know you're four and zero, oh, and he's fifteen four months. So he's got twenty fights to your four fights. Five times as many fights as you, and you're fighting in his backyard. Kind of. I have a lot of amateur kickboxing and boxing. Um, so I mean, if you're just gonna compare fights for fights, I'm close to a hundred fights now. Oh, oh wow. wow. So as I understand it, your professional record in MMA, you've won all of your fights in the first round, and you're undefeated. And whether it be by submission or knockout. You have that finishing ability. How do you plan to go into this? Do you really feel like you can just power in into the first round and um, maybe get that finish? You know, I don't plan to end a fight in the first round. Uh, but anybody who knows, like, if you see a finish, you're going to take it. I mean, it'd be stupid not to. But I will be the first to admit that I've actually not fought the best competition back in St. Louis. Um, and, uh, you know, I haven't fought the best guys with great records, this and that. Um and, you know, before I went to the tryouts, I had a fight lined up with a guy who I think was uh, 
like 20 and 4 or something like that from uh, from Iowa. Tough kid, this and that. And, you know, I was actually looking forward to it. Um, but then, you know, I got a good phone call. You know, <laughs> the show. I had to back out of that. But uh, So how did that phone call go? How did they actually approach you for this fight? Well, it was kind of weird because um, – well, not just this fight. I mean, if we're talking about the phone call, like, to get on the show, mm-hmm. it was a lot of, uh, well, you might be picked. You might be picked. Because they didn't want to give you 100% yes or no. Um, so, you know, I was. it was between emails and texts and a few phone calls of, well, you're kind of like 95% in. Wow. So it was, it was kind of weird. But um, as far as the phone call for this fight, Joe Silva called me. It was around 1130 St. Louis time, which I'm in bed by 9. I mean... <laughs> that that's that's me but so i was like who's calling me i just ignored it and then uh i called back the next morning and he's like hey this is joe silva with the ufc blah, that's blah. not what he sounds like <laughs> he doesn't sound like, hey, this is joe. he's like hey this is joe silva with the ufc how are you adam I gotta, that's a good joe silva huh? I, gotta, I gotta make him sound tough uh, <laughs> he's kind of the boss but uh yeah and and he actually didn't answer he actually got a hold of my management this and that and uh that's how they told me about the fight and Kind of went from there. Now you talked about your experience in the in the mixed martial arts world not being that deep, and you haven't faced faced the greatest competition. But what are your accomplishments in amateur boxing, amateur kickboxing? What are the some of the things some of the things you've done there? How many fights did you have in amateur boxing and amateur kickboxing? Uh, well, I started amateur kickboxing. Um, whew, it was probably like seven, eight years ago, and. Uh, you know, I won a couple of the IKF tournaments, this and that. Are we and, talking uh, like Muay Thai? No, just like traditional kickboxing. Okay. Um, there's a couple of different rules. You know, ones with leg kicks, no leg kicks. You know, waist up kicks, this and that. Kind of silliness, but uh. American kickboxing rules. Yeah. Gotcha. But um, no, I ended up racking up about 37, 40 fights somewhere in there. Oh wow. But like, you lose track because I got <laughs> a lot of the phone calls of, "Hey, can you come up this weekend and fight this guy? It's an exhibition." Blah blah blah. Right. But and it's, so it's those expi- uh, exhibitions are usually in that person's gym, and it's more like just a smoker in the gym. Or oh is no, it like this a big hall. No, this was uh, their opponent backed out, and they needed someone to fill in. Oh wow! And you know, I, I pride myself on always being in shape, so I, I always was like, yeah, sure, why not? And plus, I was a dumb kid, so there was times I would fight. I, I fought like five or six times in a month, and it was, I mean, sometimes it was cutting weight, sometimes it wasn't. So it was. I don't know. So what I'm curious about is that you revealed on the show that your family actually owns a business back home and that you don't really need to do this, but you want to do this. What is it that makes you want to fight? Uh, Honestly, you know, I got a lot of slack over that. Um, I got people hating on me on Facebook and Twitter saying, uh, we'll give someone else a chance, this and that. But, like, here's the, the difference is, like, I have a good paying job back home. I work my butt off every day. Um... And then I still fit in the same amount of training as all these other guys who do this full time. Um, and the reason I want to do it is it's just fun. I mean, like, no, I don't like to go in the gym twice a day, wake up early, run, diet, cut weight. That all sucks. But after a fight, you win and you went out there and you gave it 100%. Whether you win or lose, it's just, it's just like you can't you, I can't really put into words like that feeling. It's just it's, it's really just kind of cool. Now, I got a couple questions for you being on the show. First and foremost, um, you know, of course, you and Uriah Hall, there was some, you guys fought, there was all that, but then there was there was some stuff that took place afterwards, especially around the campfire, <laughs> and it seemed like uh, when the show came out, there was like, you know, ahead of time, Uriah took to Twitter and was kind of making, trying to defuse the situation, like, it's not as bad as it makes me seem, and then you watch it, and it looked like Josh Saman was kind of egging him on, and... And based off the editing, you know, he took a shot at you off that whole thing. But then after that episode, he went back to it. was like, what didn't go down like that. I'm a victim of the editing. So just clear the air for us. Was he a victim of the editing? Was he kind of a jerk? No. Uh, you're right. I don't know if I can say this, but Uriah is a dick. <laughs> I was going to say that word, but I, I, I cut it out. I will be the first to say Uriah. Just, he, he, he was just a dick. I mean, nobody, uh, nobody liked him. Um on his on his own team. I mean, and and you kind of see it. I don't know if they'll show it, but um, you know, those guys were telling us that nobody wants to train with him. Nobody wants to spar with him, cause he he goes too hard. So um, he uh, you know, he he just kind of he doesn't know how to train. I think, as far as like in the show, I don't know how he's back home, but um, you know, as far as like him saying stuff to me, this and that outside of the gym. I don't think he understands joking. Like, he, he called me a bitch 
and something about my girlfriend, this and that. Do you have a girlfriend, by the way? No. So so that was just like <laughs> left field. You didn't even have no, a girlfriend. I, I, I did, um, and we're kind of in a weird limbo thing, but uh, Vegas, uh, Vegas will do that to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I hear. <laughs> but uh, no, we had uh, – we had they had set us up to go to the Red Rock Casino to uh, go bowling, and they showed that episode. And your you know Uriah came up, and what they don't show is that when Uriah walks up, he says, "Oh, I'll hang out with you guys, although I only like Dylan and and Clint or something like that." And we're like, "Uh, <laughs> that's kind of weird, but all right, whatever, dude." So we sit down, you know, we're all friendly, this and that, and then uh, we're going to the Red Rock, and he says. Oh, I think we're going to the... I thought we were going to the Hard Rock. I was like... And it's just as a joke. I was like, well, I guess you can go to the Hard Rock. We're all going to the Red Rock. And I guess that just set him off. Like he, and some stuff they don't show is uh, him and Colin kind of had some words. Um, he told he he looked Colin in the face, told him to F off. Like, he, he, he just rubbed everybody the wrong way, so... Uh, Do you think it was just the fact that, you know, I mean... You go into the show and you have to live together, train together, but there's a chance that you might be fighting every single person in that house. And you think it was he just didn't know how to turn that off? Because they showed him that episode where he was all off to the side at Hooters. He wouldn't engage and take the picture and hang out. And he said, I can't turn I can't turn it off. I can't turn off the fight mode. And do you think it's just like he kind of looked at every single one of you as an opponent and didn't know how to filter that out? Or do you think just he's just a dick? I think uh, <laughs> as, far as, as far as training... He looked at everybody as an opponent. Like, I know he went with Luke pretty hard a couple times, and, uh, you know, he's like, oh, well, I may have to fight him. I want him to know, blah, 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 this and that. But yeah. as far as the, the Hooters thing, um, that was just him being – that was really just him being him. I mean, he uh, he was always by himself. He never really came out of his room. Um, he would go run in the backyard, and, and just he was always by himself because nobody really wanted to be around him. He just said weird things and was just kind of awkward. Um, which it sucks because I kind of knew him from a kickboxing thing before, and uh, we, so you knew him. Were you cool with him before the show? Acquaintances, uh, <laughs> at least. Um, I would say I was an acquaintance of his, but we fought on this uh, pro kickboxing league, and he was on the New Jersey team. I was on the St. Louis Between team. The Chuck Norris. Uh, yeah. Okay. The World Combat League. Yeah, okay, WCL. And uh, when our teams fought each other, and I and, and I, it didn't click until back home someone had mentioned it to me. Um, he started. He started kind of like a, a bit of a, a fight there, oh, like really? on, on the side. Like everybody's fighting in the in the the little circle thing, whatever it was. And he was jaw jacking with like our head coach, a couple of our uh, other fighters. Um, so then I, re- I and then when it clicked, I was like, okay, it makes sense. He's very confrontational. And but what uh, kills me is that you seem very easygoing. Like even after yeah. the knockout and you went to the hospital, you come back in the hospital <laughs> gown. You're being very fun loving about it. I don't know what knockout you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't really remember. So, oh. <laughs> but uh, knocked out of recollection. Yeah. Like here's the thing is like you know I don't remember the fight. So uh, when I got to see it and go back, um, I went straight forward. You know, and and. and you look great until the, until yeah. that point. It was an e- it was a close fight. I mean, you looked you were bringing it to him. You looked very 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 composed, and it was it was a good fight. Well, thanks. I mean, watching it back, um, I was a little sloppy. Our game plan was to kind of hit him with some weird angles, and then when he started covering up, go straight you know, straight punches. Um, and you know, he might be a dick, but the dude's a stud. He is. I mean, he's an athlete, and uh, I in the World Combat League, I saw him kick people like that probably ten or fifteen times. I mean. He's a tough dude, you know. Um, Personality-wise, though, he's a he's a dick. <laughs> well, I'm I'm actually I'll be honest. I'm listening to everything Adam's saying, and I'm glad that you're having to tell us this, and this isn't something they've seen because, like I, we've talked about before, this is the best season of the Ultimate Fighter, and I mm-hmm. think it's because the way it's been done, they're not showing as Joey is called the debiri in the room, the douchebags mm-hmm. doing what they're doing, and you're actually seeing the training and what you guys thro- go through and. Um, you know, I, I really enjoyed the season, and I'm, I'm really glad you're telling us this stuff than us having to see it. But um, we do have to take a break. So, but we do have a, we have a great show. We got more with Adam coming up. We got Ryan Couture coming up. We've got four fights this month. Yeah, In baby. the month of April, we've got four fights. We've got so much to talk about. <laughs> really looking forward to what's coming up. 
so much from March Madness. I like April's assaults. I'm still about the March Madness. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but. <laughs> and we also we have the Quebec story, which is going on. Yes, when we get back, when we come back from the break, we'll talk about it. Wouldn't be a Diaz title fight with a little controversy, whining, <laughs> complaining, and uh, and trash talking post fight. Yeah, and we will get to all of that later, along with Ryan Couture. Uh, you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner, streaming worldwide on UFCRadio.com. We will be right back. MMA Fight Club. <laughs> MMA Fight Corner. All right, welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner, streaming worldwide on UFCRadio.com. Joining us in the Fight Corner right now, new UFC lightweight Ryan Couture making his UFC debut, taking on Ross Pearson next week, April 6th, in Stockholm, Sweden. Ryan, thanks for joining us. How are you doing today? Doing great. How are you guys? Excellent, excellent. So tell us, what are your thoughts on going to Sweden and, Sweden and finally fighting outside of the U.S. for the first time? Uh, I'm excited. It's it's going to be an interesting uh, sort of curveball in the the preparation to have that long flight and the time change to to adjust to. But uh, you know, get some good tips from from the old man, and and uh, I think I'll be able to take that in stride. And and I'm really looking forward to seeing Sweden. It's going to be a really really cool experience over there. Yeah. Now, are you ready for all that extra attention that comes on fight week? Now that you're the co-main event. Uh, it's already started to pick up. I've, I've had a lot more media requests and a lot more stuff going on than than I have for any of my previous fights. So um, so far, it hasn't hasn't uh, been too tough of an adjustment. I, I'm interested to see what it's like when we get over there, and, and uh, you know, that'll definitely be another another interesting change. Um, but at least it means I won't be sitting around a hotel room with nothing to do all week. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Now you're going to be there. Now, when are you actually when are you going? When are you leaving for Sweden? Uh, I leave Vegas uh, Monday night at like 9 p.m. So we're gonna fly overnight. I think we, with the time change and everything, I think we get into Sweden at like 8:30 p.m. on Tuesday. So um, basically, burn a whole day up on the on the flight. Oof, that, that that's yeah. and, and jet lag too. Gonna uh, you got a week though. I mean, you, you've got a whole, almost almost you know five good days. Do you think that's enough time to get to get accustomed to the time change and recover from the jet lag? Yeah, it sounds like the, the, the whole key is, is to make sure I do it right on, the, on that first day and, and uh, you know, get my workout in at fight time and, and then get to bed at a regular hour and sleep through the night. And then uh, that should help kind of get me set on that schedule. You know, I'm, sure, I'm sure I'll still be a little sluggish for the first couple of days, but, but by fight night I should be ready to go. And, and when you say fight night, it's actually going to be fight day for your, for your internal clock, right? Because the fight's, the fight's going to be at night over there, but, but uh, for our time it'll be like 12 noon when you're actually fighting, right? Yep, yep, and we actually have started adjusting workouts a little bit this week so that I'm training right at noonish, so fight time over there, and you know, hopefully that will pay off as well. 
Now, we've had fighters on the show in the past talk about what a hard time it is making that weight cut in a foreign country. Uh, have you made plans for that and that adjustment? Uh, my weight has been way ahead of schedule this whole camp, I think, because of such a quick turnaround from the last fight. So I'm not too concerned with it. I, I am curious, you know, what kind of groceries we'll be able to get our hands on over there. And, and you know, I, I think we'll be able to adjust on the fly to, to what we're able to, to work with over there. But, but um I'm, I'm feeling fortunate this time that, that I'm already really light, and I mean I could make weight today if I had to. Yeah, I, I like that. He keeps saying we, like there's yeah, the team the behind team, him, absolutely. and I, and I really do. I, I like that, and you appreciate. I appreciate that. Now, besides Tim Lane and, and Neil Melanson, who who else is going with you, and who's going to be that third man in the corner? Um, Neil's actually not going to be able to make the trip this time. Really? Uh, his, uh, I don't know if you guys know about his illness at all. Yeah. Uh, yes. His Rickett disease. He it uh, really doesn't doesn't react well when he travels so a flight that long would, would put him out of commission for pretty much the whole time we'd be over there anyway uh so neil's going to stay home and uh frank triggs stepping up to take his place uh and then uh my friend marcus kovo who will be over there covering the event for uh for a swedish mma website is is uh, going to be the third man in the corner to help out well, Ryan, I want to take it back a little bit and talk about your growing up. You know, you're, you're the son of, of Randy Couture, of course. I know you get this a lot, but um, what was it like growing up as having one of the greatest fighters in the history of mixed martial arts as your father? Is this something that kind of motivated you to be a fighter, or at first did it kind of push you away and not necessarily make you want to follow in Pop's footsteps? Um, it, a little bit of both. I mean, it, it made me a huge fan of the sport and, and – gave me a unique perspective on what it was to be a fighter and, and what it took and, and, you know, his, his, his whole process, what he went through. Um, you know, so I got to see it firsthand and, and see the good and the bad that comes with it. Um, you know, I didn't see myself ever doing it. And, and that was, you know, part of the reason was just having those expectations that I knew would be placed on me because of what he had done. Um, but once I started training and, and just sort of fell in love with it, I, I didn't see any other option. I, I, I was hooked. So, um, you know, I, I think uh, if if it wasn't for what what he did and for for being there for his career and becoming such a big fan and kind of falling in love with the sport through that, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. Um, but it also did act as a little bit of a deterrent at the at the same time. Moving forward, do you feel that there's a there's a, a burden on your shoulders? You know that you're always going to be living up these expectations that you are the the second coming of Couture. You know the 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 son of the great one. You know is that just on your shoulders? You know and it, like for instance, you know you're in an interview right now. How many fighters get on a phone and they get an interview and they get asked questions about their dad? I mean it's it's few and far between. And I think this is something that you're going to have to deal with your whole career. You know, do you feel that there's pressure? Or is it just kind of you know the the Couture mentality because your dad and, and I know you pretty well. You guys always seem to have this. You know, pressure doesn't phase us mentality. Is that how you handle this? Yeah, I don't. I don't uh, feel any pressure because of it. The only pressure I feel is is that pressure I put on myself to to perform to my capabilities. Um, it, it's something that I came to terms with before I ever stepped in the ring as an amateur the first time. Was that this was not the life I was choosing, and that I was always going to be, you know, in that shadow and and talking about it and. You know, it just motivates me to, to work that much harder to, to sort of build my own resume and my own body of work for people to have more to talk about than just dad. So as, as long as uh, as long as we're always talking about something I did as well as talking about, about that relationship, then I'm fine with it and I'm doing my job. Well, let's talk about the upcoming fight here with Ross. I mean, you're coming into this fight. It's the co-main event. Not many people get that on their UFC debut. And Ross, let's face it, he's the ultimate fighter winner. The guy's tough as nails. What are you looking to own in this fight what aspect do you think you can really take advantage of in the fight uh you know i think i'm going to need to be on point with my wrestling i think i have a significant advantage if i can get the fight to the mat but uh it, it's no small feat to get ross there so you know that's the big thing for me is is staying away from his power and and picking my spots to get my hands on him and, and try and force the grappling and and uh, apply my advantage there so you know it's just going to be a matter of of fighting smart and not making any mistakes. Ross is very dangerous, but I'm more than capable of beating him and, and I think the way that we match up, I just have to I just have to uh pick my openings and, and tip the odds in my favor. Speaking of the odds actually, I was checking out the odds on this fight and uh I think you're a four to one underdog right now if I'm not mistaken. Uh does that at all bother you or get in your head what you see as the odds for this fight? 
No, that just means my friends are going to make some money. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I, I put money down. I was telling. I'm I, laying down 50 on it. Yeah, yeah, I was doing my breakdowns, man. And I, and, I, and I love the, I love your height, your length. You know, I love the grappling ability. And I, I, I'll tell you what, I, I like your striking as well. I think you're long enough and, and, and strong enough. And seeing what you do with KJ, taking the best punches that KJ had to offer. You know, I, I don't think, when, it, when I look at KJ Noons and Ross Pearson on paper, I don't think Ross hits harder or is a better boxer or striker than KJ Nunes. And I, in, in surviving that fight and winning that fight, coming out ahead and looking as sharp as you did that fight, that gave me all the confidence in the world to, to, to throw down some money and to, to sit back and wait for that big payday. Yeah. <laughs> Just one last thing, Ryan, uh, from me anyway. I know you fought a lot in Strike Force and you faced, like he said, KJ Nunes, some pretty tough opponents. Uh, but do you feel anything? I guess hanging over you as far as octagon jitters going into this, it kind of is known to affect a lot of people, but you know, you're kind of a seasoned pro already. Does that have any kind of effect on you or are you thinking about it at all? Um, I'm not expecting to, to really feel that, but I, I really won't know probably until the fight is over. I think it'll be similar to, uh, to my pro debut where the whole lead up to the fight, I felt fine. I didn't, I didn't feel like I was dealing with any nerves. And then as soon as the fight was over, there was this huge release and this huge, like, weight lifted off me and uh you know i could see maybe something similar happening happening in this one but you know as far as how i felt during preparation i, I feel confident and, and training's been great and and uh you know everything feels just like it should so i i don't see it being a big issue yeah well i'm really looking forward to it and you know we we talked about it uh, on monday leading into this that you know every fight you get the competition keeps to to step it up and you and you get you're you are facing some veterans of the sport, and you're pulling out the wins. You're doing what you got to do. It's a very exciting time in your career. Obviously, now you're a co-main co event of a UFC card. Very excited for you. We have one last thing to do, Ryan. Before we finish off every interview right now, I'm going to throw you five really quick questions. You got to tell me the first thing that comes to your head, okay? Oh, this is scary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? What was the last, sure. what was the last book you read? Uh, I'm still working on it. It's another roadside attraction by uh, Tom Robbins. Excellent. Favorite superhero growing up? Batman. Batman. Favorite movie? Uh, I suck at this question. Um, Batman the movie, the old 60s one. Oh, oh with, Batman the, with the shark repellent spray? Absolutely. <laughs> 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 All right. Ready? On a hot dog, mustard or, or uh, ketchup? Mustard. To you to man <laughs> on, on my cereal <laughs> even i don't care nice <laughs> nice and what was the worst job you've ever had uh i had a job as a lab tech in a environmental engineering firm and i washed dirt that's awesome that has got to be the the worst job i've ever heard you wash dirt wait a minute so uh, <laughs> Literally soap and water washed dirt samples. Oh, I, I know wow. that you don't have a real nickname. They've toyed with Ryan the Lion, and you're not really feeling that. What about Ryan the Dirt Washer Couture? It doesn't get more <laughs> honest or real than that. Oh, that's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You can you can hit Joey next time you see him. I know you'll see him soon. So, but <laughs> Ryan, <hard> to hit. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. Wish you the best of luck. Have a safe flight, and uh, you know, get the win in there. And we'll look forward to talking to you when you get back. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. All right. That was fun stuff, Ryan. Stuff. Yeah. Dirt washer. How do you? How do you, Adam? How, how do you think you wash dirt? I would assume with water, but then it turns, <laughs> then it turns to the mud, mud, right? And, and so I, I think he might have just lied to us. Yeah. <laughs> That's like the hardest job, I would really think. Like, this is just not getting clean. It's just not working. Well, I'm just trying to think of, like, when I wash, like, I, the image that had came to my head is, like, my dishes on the left side of the sink and then the empty side, and I wash it on one side, rinse it on the other. And I try to picture that same thing with a pile of dirt, and it just, it's not working out. I'm just, the, the, the dirt's falling through my hands. I, I don't know. I don't know how to make it work. Uh, it's funny stuff. Stuff. But you know what? He he made a believer out of me because of the fact that he puts mustard on his hot dog. <laughs> I I mentioned this to Joe. No, Adam, what about you? Mustard or ketchup on a hot dog? I like mustard, ketchup, and relish. Yeah. Oh, see, I went see, super like gross. Now, now wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Listen to what how Joey dresses up his hot dog. I take the hot dog out the bun. 
I put mayonnaise on both sides of the bun. Oh. I put the hot dog back in. I do a line of mustard, a line of ketchup, and then if I'm really feeling salty, I'll put some relish on one side on the ketchup side and some onions on the mustard side. That sounds very healthy. I just threw uh, up in my do, mouth. Do, do you know that? Honestly, like, I never eat them. I, I eat I'm pretty healthy. I'm on the, the Dolce lifestyle. I've been yeah. on for a few years. <laughs> but uh, um, that's my favorite food. How white trash is that? My favorite food is hot dogs. If I was on death row, I'd order a plate full of hot dogs. That's disgusting. 7 <laughs> Eleven hot dogs at that. No, no, not at that. Oh, jeez, oh, that's crazy. That is crazy. But, well, we do have to take a quick break. We, uh, we have to pay some bills, so to say. So, uh, I want you to stay right there. Keep listening. We'll be back with Adam, with Joey, with Heidi, and with Billy Mira in a couple minutes. You're listening to the MMA Fight Corner, streaming worldwide on UFCradio.com. We'll be right back. 